I am architect Sohila Basi. I have been. I graduated uh, and did my architecture in 1968, and since then I'm into private practice. Uh, my life basically has. Uh, my professional life basically has three uh, phases. One was the first seven years where I worked uh, with uh, with a group of engineers as as their partner, as an architect partner. And uh, that was my first phase of my professional life. The second phase was uh, when I started working on my own and then joined by another architect and then joined by a third architect. Uh, so my firm was at that time Sohail Shahid and Pasha, uh, which Pasha basically, uh, Shahid uh, left the uh, partnership and uh, myself and Pasha went on for almost 20 years. And then in, uh, in around year 2000, we fell apart. And uh, since then, I'm working uh, with my son as my partner. The name of my firm is now Soil and Fawad. My design philosophy uh, basically had all along been uh, that I, we wanted, I wanted to be simple, I wanted to be uh, good, that's all. I, how did I get into a certain way of uh, designing buildings? Uh, this transition uh, now between uh, 68 till about 77, 78, I was doing uh, whatever, whatever uh, was almost. Uh, even in that, uh, we tried and do do whatever uh, whatever best we could do. But in 1977, suddenly we realized that we are going away from our vernacular. We are going away from our look up our our own architecture, and we are go we are producing buildings which are very. Which, which probably are, you can see those buildings anywhere in the world. We are not, we are totally not into into sort of uh, looking into the possibilities of using vernacular or uh, using um, uh, the sustainable uh, architecture. We had been using brick and then we were putting stucco on it or we had been putting plaster on it and we realized why are we doing that? Uh, why don't we sort of leave the brick as they are because they are a beautiful material and they are a, as, as the brick ages it becomes more nice to look at. Uh, this transition happened when we were doing the PF Academy and we have done the first building of um, the hostel buildings and the mess building which was uh, hammered concrete. We then decided that we would uh, basically like to do the buildings in brick, brick and uh, so we did, in fact there were three buildings that we had already done, two were in fair face concrete, the third one uh, the hostel blocks were in uh, stucco and paint. We decided that from here onwards we would sort of try and do brick build, see whether we can do brick buildings. Somehow the client uh, did not uh, uh, disagree with us. And in fact, Air Force officers were quite good clients. They, they gave us quite free hand to do those buildings. So that is when we started uh, thinking of uh, doing the buildings in brick. And we did a couple of uh, buildings in PF Academy of Salpur where we did some buildings purely in brick and uh, as fair face brick, which was sort of, and then there were some buildings which, were, which we thought would Use, doing it completely in brick would probably uh, um, uh, would not be possible. So we tried this uh, mix of uh, bricks and uh, concrete. This is what uh, was our first journey in, into sort of uh, architecture, what I had been sort of done doing in, for the last so many e years. But the fact is that I am not really. Uh, I would. Uh, we would still like to. I would still like to sort of experiment with other materials. I'm not rejecting other materials. I'm not rejecting. Uh, I only take uh, the uh, spirit of the old. I do not want to sort of reproduce 1850 uh, architecture. I would only take the spirit, and then I would sort of see it uh, in the terms of the latest uh, or, the, or the current uh, um, technology and try and use it in such a manner that uh, it meets the requirement of modern day life, meets the modern day life requirements also and uh, make the building look like an, um, a heritage building or something. When I was building this house, in fact it had almost uh, completed and somebody came and, uh, to my house and asked me, are you going to make a statement? 
And I said, no, I'm making a house. I'm not a dictator. I'm not forcing my uh, ideas on my clients. I'm just trying to listen to them uh, and m meet uh, their uh, requirements in a manner that satisfies them also and it satisfies my creative uh, faculties also. But uh, it is not uh, something that I would say that um, I, have a, I have a very big, um, strong philosophy about my designing. I just sit down. Pick up, pick up a piece of, piece of paper, let me tell you, I'm still an old timer. I still enjoy having a piece of paper in front of me, having a pencil, a couple of pencils in, uh, with me and some, some colored markers and then I would like to sort of uh, sketch it with pencil. Got this uh, plot in 1994, bought it, bought it. I used to live on the same road uh, in F10 area, my area and I used to come walking uh, uh, I used to walk uh, almost about two, three kilometers or uh, four kilometers per day. So I just walked uh, to this place and uh, I liked this plot and I stood here and I said, I want to buy this plot. So I asked somebody uh, to sort of get me this plot. So he came, I was, I was, he gave me a price which I said, no, it's too high. And then the man disappeared and I some, uh, after some time I called him and said, okay, where is, what happened? He said, uh, so that plot is sold. And I was furious with myself that only for a for a, for a couple of thousand, maybe I don't think it was more than hundred thousand rupees or something that I just let it go. And I just again came walking and uh, stood here. Uh, it was a mount. It was a mount. The, ro the road, uh, the plot itself was higher than uh, the road. I just climbed the mount, stood here. It was around the same time, 5, 5, 30 in the evening. And I looked at uh, the skies and said, oh God, you can't do this to me. I, uh, I am on this plot and I just went home after saying all this. I do not know what else I said but I just complained uh, I, and uh, strange, in two days this man comes back to me and says, or two days or maybe more than that uh, and he said, uh, would you still like to buy that plot? I said yes. He said, would you be willing to the, the, the demand of the uh, owner? I said, uh, all right, I'll, I'll do that. And that's how I got this plot. So like I was telling you, when uh, this plot was uh, higher than um, uh, the road level, when I looked at the mound, I decided that I'm not going to uh, level it uh, along the road. My plot has uh, open, is open at the back and there is an area, extra area was available and there was a sheer drop of about 45, 50 feet. Uh, and there was a beautiful clean water uh, um, stream uh, or nala or whatever we may call it, ravine. Uh, and standing at about 50 feet height, I could see Kachwebi Nagar Atese Muposhe. And it was such a nice clean water. Uh, so I thought this is the view that I have to open my house to. That was one. Uh, one was the plot itself. Uh, this, the, this, uh, the, uh, configuration of the plot. The second one was uh, my desire to open my house towards the back because I realized being on the main road there will be a lot of traffic, there will be a lot of noise, there will be a lot of dust. So and at the same time this uh, side offered me much better views. Uh, it offered me green views and then beyond green I had uh, uh, Margala, Margala Rain. I had known exactly between this and uh, between my plot and the next uh, development there is a plot underneath, but that is going to be a girls' college, uh, which would be built whenever it would be built. So it didn't, that didn't bother me. Uh, but uh, So that was the other reason. The third one was that I wanted uh, my house to be all around me. And uh, so I decided that wherever I stand, wherever I am, I can see the whole house around me. I didn't want uh, my house to be sort of, uh, to be such that if I go into certain part of my house, then I'm totally cut off from the rest of the house. So that, that was the other reason. By dividing my stories, uh, which, which are normally about 10, 12 feet high, in every case you have a basement and then you have a ground floor and then you have a base, uh, first floor. And all these are about 10, 12 feet high. And modern uh, architecture, their height is normally 10, 12 feet. So I decided that I would have, uh, since I wanted all my main rooms, uh, bedrooms and every other room uh, except for kitchen and study per force uh, came on this side. Uh, 
I decided to sort of break these uh, stories into levels, into levels, and divide them in half levels, uh, so that each time you have to climb only about uh, half the steps, not 18, 20 steps, but eight to nine steps every every time. This house uh, grew out of my childhood, in fact, and that I that I realized much later, when the house was built and I was um, sitting and enjoying uh, the spaces. Uh, then suddenly I realized that uh, there are certain features in my house which probably has come from my very young age when I was in Multan. The, the courtyard of that house in Multan and then a room overlooking that uh, house and where, where my mother uh, used to sort of, uh, which was my father and mother's bedroom and they would probably they would uh, at time and we used to play in that court in that courtyard and she was sort of basically so that was a feature that i realized that it has come from there and then the other thing was uh, the house in uh, sorry Boda, uh, where uh, it has also got some old features uh, uh, in this house as well and uh, the courtyard which now is my three-story atrium uh, it has become modern and it has a roof on it To me, the house has to, to have a mystery about it. It must reveal itself in a very slow ma manner. And then every time you sort of see something, that it should give you a totally a different um, uh, feel about the whole house. Uh, when I did this house, then I was, I was probably reading um, some quotes um, about Asian houses. There's a book called Asian Houses. And um, uh, I was reading a couple of quotes and suddenly I realized that at least two of those quotes are basic. It looks like they have been said about my house. Two projects done by me in uh, recent past now being shown. Uh, the one is uh, the Polo Club, Polo uh, Complex uh, in Islamabad Club. It's part of Islamabad Club. Somehow there is something which is, there is no architectonics involved in it. It's, it's a very uh, down-to-earth sort of a project. I was not designing the buildings for uh, humans. I was designing that complex for horses. So we had to sort of basically uh, try and understand how uh, does the whole thing work. So we had lots of interviews with the polo players. And I realized it is totally, the polo is totally different than uh, riding or, or, or racing. The horses are also um, not not what the racing horses are and what the other riding horses are. Anyway, we did our research, a lot of research. The site was a very difficult one. It was all um, undulating land uh, leading towards water body or nala at the at the back. I think the first uh, thing was club wanted uh, that building to be of uh, to uh, that complex to be of international uh, level so that they could invite international players all over the world to come and play in Pakistan and. Uh, so they decided to uh, have at least on paper uh, an international uh, personality who is known for uh, designing of um, uh, polo complexes. He is not an architect, he was not an architect, he was only a polo player who then later on turned into designing polo uh, complexes. But before he came to Pakistan, he was called to Pakistan and uh, before he came with his associates, we had developed the basic concept of the whole thing. We had laid down everything that uh, where the main polo field would be, then how would the arena be and uh, where would we have uh, these tables and another other thing for the... And when he came, he looked at it and he said, well, I think they have, uh, whatever they have done is all absolutely correct. There's no... Uh, but in any case, they were helpful in the sense that they, they told us uh, quite a few things about uh, the how these grounds are to be sort of grassed, how, what sort of a grass we would need, uh, what sort of facilities we would require in uh, the buildings that we would make, the, uh, the corrals where the horse, uh, horses would be, or the stables, which is slightly uh, more elaborate than corral. Corral is also as part of a, like a stable, but uh, open from all sides and stable is, a, is a sort of more like a closed sort of a, um, thing. And then we had to have uh, with the players, their, uh, the horse groomers also come. There has to be an accommodation for them also. 
it was really uh, something that uh, was new but at the same time very exciting to work on and uh, it doesn't have to you didn't have to go to go into architectonics you, there was no glass involved there was no elaborate architectural details were required it was only doing things in a very simple manner we chose brick we thought and our clients were also very keen that whatever we do uh, in fact in, in the other other projects also they wanted us to give them maintenance free buildings and we sort of said okay we'll do that but uh, in that case uh, we'll do brick buildings so this this uh, th that is the only thing that uh, probably uh, we uh, did but i am sure uh, it's like it's like something which has got a very rural setting once you go there you would realize that all over it's a green area lots of grass trees levels water and suddenly there are horses moving around and then some brick buildings which are which are which have a very rural nature it, it, it's not it's not uh, uh, something that one can say a very modern urban uh, development so i think this is one of the buildings uh, or one of the uh, design projects that i call one of my favorite projects a house uh, that i have designed uh, for a friend of mine it is a farmhouse uh, located in chak shahzad which is uh, one of the farm areas of uh, islamabad uh, the house uh, has been designed basically for a for a very small family at this point of time because there are only uh, three of them their daughter one of their daughters and uh, two of them and the rest is uh, rest of their children are uh, not um, in pakistan or el they are elsewhere but anyway they they, they do, do do keep coming again uh, this house uh, when i uh, decided to do, uh, do it i thought i would uh, maybe uh, polo was still fresh in my mind and i since i had suddenly developed such a i thought that is one of my favorite designs i thought that sort of a rural setting i would like to bring into this house also there were certain uh, things uh, which sort of compelled me to design which sort of forced me to design this uh, house in a in a certain uh, manner one was that it had to be a single story house allowed only 4900 square foot of area and that to into into uh, uh, small uh, components of uh, thing they were not uh, so i just placed randomly i placed all these blocks and then i just uh, realized that how i'm going to connect them later on when they turn into a house because the blocks were basically meant according to um, uh, cds requirement meant for something else uh, they were either a machinery shed or it was something uh, else that was basically hot winking that was just getting it approved and then build whatever you want to build so once we did that the cda gave us a permission to start the construction then by sat down and connected all those things now what happened in that was that because of that plan i had certain courtyards uh, just happened just like that and then i realized that i now i need to sort of uh, work around those courtyards and uh, the whole house uh, has to sort of follow follow uh, the the type of um, architecture or uh, that existed long time ago the courtyard houses uh, not really uh, something which is very modern and very centrally air conditioned and everything happening inside and outside are very fancy lawns or things like that so that's how this courtyard house um, houses uh, there were, there were two courtyards one large one the other one was small small inside courtyard and the whole house are sort of basically grouped ar around that again i think it is something that i probably picked up from our vernacular uh, from our indigenous uh, architecture the house was supposed to be all in brick finished but uh, um, i think my client probably had some financial uh, constraints so then at that time i made a few changes in that house and turned it into a part of part of the brickwork was removed and it was finished with stucco and then some uh, elements which i thought cannot be done other than in brick those i still finished them in uh, brick and this house uh, i think has got a very nice uh, feel about, about about it luckily this client of mine has a good collection of art 
is uh, furniture maybe I'm a little uh, I feel that is slightly more than it that this house requires uh, but by and large they have done this house very well and I'm sure the people who would go there would enjoy the whole overall ambiance of that place also. Architectural courses in all the schools have now become more theoretical and there is a practical aspect. Now architecture, like I told you, it's not it's, uh, the design and drawings are only the tools. The, it is the buildability, uh, how you build and how you, uh, what do you know the construction process of a building. That's also a very important part of uh, education. So my advice to the students are, I, mean, I have been going to the, uh, uh, final uh, thesis ju juries also and uh, Lots of time we were told we were told by the department or by the yeah. academicians that judge them on idea only. Don't get into details of uh, how they would be built. And I disagree with that. So actually, uh, what I would like to tell these uh, students, uh, the the fresh ar architects, one that they must, while they're studying, then they should try and learn at least learn the basics of uh, how a building uh, which, which they are designing would be built, its uh, buildability kya hai. Rather than getting into very fancy looking Zaha Hadid like projects or Frank Gehry or Kalatrava sort of projects, try and do, take, do the things in a very simple manner. But do it in a uh, comprehensive way, do it, do it, in, do it in, more, in, in detail so that you can understand how the things are put together. And that is what I would want. And the third thing is, don't be in a hurry to sort of uh, become a master architect. It'll, it takes a lifetime before, before you reach there. And you should go and work in good offices to learn the real architecture.